Inventory levels pull back from year-long highs slightly, but don't worry if you're a buyer in the market. A surge of inventory is coming after Labor Day. But we also have some great news to talk about as we head into the fall. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We'll also do an interest rate update. And let's talk about why you want high interest rates and should be possibly begging the Fed for even higher rates. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then know I'm here to help. Do you remember that Staples commercial with the most wonderful time of the year song in the background with the dad dancing and cheering? As he goes down the aisles, putting school supplies in the shopping cart. I didn't get it when my dad would be singing to the chorus of this song, but boy, do I get it today. Like so many others, this week, my kids go back to school. We will enjoy a holiday weekend this coming weekend, and then it's back to normal. It's a dead market right now, but the market tends to get on its feet really quickly after Labor Day. So get ready. But now let's jump into the single family market stats. We currently have 3,976 Single-family homes on the market. Now, inventory pulled back slightly from the year-long high last week. Now, frankly, it was a little bit of a shock, and the market went against the historical grain with inventory gains in the last three weeks. But boy, what a difference when you compare the inventory levels compared to last year and the year before. The inventory level difference between this year and last year grew by 17 units to a difference of 1,176 units. So for all intents and purposes, inventory levels pretty much were in line with what was happening this week last year. Now, it's crazy to think that just one month ago, there was an 1,855 unit difference in the amount of inventory on the market. But as you can see from the chart, we can say with full confidence that inventory levels will go down drastically this week. And it's because we're going to see a dra drastic reduction in the amount of the inventory. We had 850 single family homes come on the market this week. We were 10.2% off this week last year. And there are 850 new listings that came on the market. You could really see how we are flirting with the inventory levels that were coming on the market last year from that graph. The four week rolling average is 907 units. So the 850 units that came on the market this week is below that moving average. But I'd expect that as we go into one of the slowest weeks of the year. Now, we had 904 single-family homes go under agreement last week. This is compared to the 1,042 units that went under agreement this week last year. This means that under agreements were off by 13.2% compared to levels last year. And you can see from the chart that this is a big improvement from last week's 28.2% difference. Three weeks ago, there was a 9% difference between new listings and under agreements. Two weeks ago and last week, that difference went up to 15%. And now this week, it's down to only a 3% difference. Our market's pretty much in line with what we saw last year. What will be interesting is the fall market last year. It was a rough market, very limited buyer demand because sales that would have organically happened in the fall happened in the spring and summer as people push up their timeline to take advantage of those more favorable rates. Essentially, the spring market cannibalized sales from the fall. So the market comparisons, I believe, are going to be a little interesting as we close out this year. So be on the lookout. Now, the four-week rolling average is 863 units, so under agreements came in stronger this week. There were 719 single-family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $791,000 and a median sales price of $629,000. In months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market that we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market. With the closer you get to zero, the more aggressive of a seller's market it is. Now, this week, months of inventory slipped to 1.34 months, compared to last week's 1.35 months. This continues to indicate that, that it is a strong seller market. Real quick, here's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, on to the condo market. We have 2,203 condos on the market as of Monday. This is compared to last week's 2,181 units. So inventory in the condo market is up slightly from last week, but very slightly. In the last three weeks, inventory levels have been 2,184 units, 2,195, 2,181 units, and now 2,203 units. In other words, the condo inventory levels have stayed in a pretty tight range for the last month. The inventory differences continue to shrink, though. We now have 208 fewer condos on the market today than we did the same time last year when there were 2,411 condos on the market. On August 1st, we had a 611 unit difference than last year. And we had 448 units the next week, and then 358 units, and then last week it was 295 units, and now 208 units. The story about condo inventory is that, yes, it isn't going up. It's steady, but the difference and issue 
is that last year in 2021, the inventory levels were decreasing. There were 375 condos that came on the market with a four week rolling average of 387 condos coming on the market. So we are slightly below the rolling average. And do you see how that blue line has crossed the red line? We are listing more condos than we did the same time last year. This week's 375 units was 14.7% more than the same time last year when there were 327 condos that came on the market. It makes sense how we're quickly closing that inventory gap between 2022 when you see this. So here's a recap of the last couple of weeks. We were seven years shy of last year's numbers, and then we listed 22 more condos than last year's. And then last week, we were nine units short compared to last year's, and now we've listed 48 more condos than the same time last year. So you're going to really see why our inventory growth is happening in the condo market. While new listings are trending above last year's numbers, under agreements are still trending below last year's activity. There were 321 condos that went under agreement this week. The four-week rolling average is 356 units, so we were again below that average. And when compared to the same time last year, there were 353 condos that went under agreement. This means that the amount of condos that went under agreement were off by 9.1%. So inventory was nearly 15% higher when compared to last year's numbers, while pendings were down by 9%. That's a big spread. There were 263 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $701,000 and a median sales price of $520,000. And then that months of inventory, it increased to 1.68 months from last week's 1.63 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? And can you do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button as it helps with that YouTube algorithm? And well, subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So maybe subscribe too. All right, let's talk interest rates. It's time to thank whatever God is that you pray to because interest rates went down this week. But this may have been the eye of the hurricane where the weather clears up and we feel good for a short period of time before the other half of the storm starts slamming us. The data that you really need to be on the lookout this week for is the ADP job data and quarter two GDP numbers on Wednesday. Now, the Fed chairman has said that they are looking ahead to how the next eight months of inflation might evolve based on other economic data. In other words, just one piece of data that goes the way that the market doesn't like will spook the markets and rates, well, they're going to shoot higher. You know my opinion on all this because our most recent video. Oh, you missed that? Then you should definitely watch. But it's my belief that inflation is going to come roaring back and rates are headed higher. Are you a buyer? Do you want home prices to stop going up by insane levels? What if I told you you should be begging the Fed to keep interest rates high and might even want them to go up more? And no, I haven't gone crazy. Check out this article. The article states that the reality of the problem isn't a housing shortage. It's the concentration of housing ownership in the top 10%. It's a really interesting thought. Who could access credit the easiest? It's the well off. So when the Fed floods the economy with cheap, well, actually free money after you factor inflation, then, well, it's the top 10% that benefit the most. And one more important part, because interest rates went down, so did rates on traditional investments. This made them and their investment vehicles look for alternative investments, which included real estate. What's the difference today? Let me ask you this question. If you could make 7% by investing in real estate and then managing said investment each month while covered debt payments when a tenant misses and continually maintaining and updating the property or sit on your couch and get the same 7% return, which one would you choose? So where is the housing hoarding going on? The article states it is in corporate companies buying rental properties and the investment craze in short-term rentals. Take a look at this chart showing the massive spike in investment purchases. This is all thanks to the Fed excessively flooding the market with liquidity. And notice the huge 49% year-over-year decline. In other words, higher interest rates are pushing out investors and allowing for more housing inventory for you, which in turn keeps prices from going up the insane amounts that they were. Look at this chart, which shows the amount of liquidity that the Fed flooded the market with. Do you notice how the surge in investment properties came at the time of the surge in Fed liquidity? That's a crazy correlation, no? But here's what's also crazy, what provides evidence to the belief that it isn't a supply problem, but a demand problem. Well, a demand coming from the wrong place problem. This chart shows how in the same time span, U.S. population grew by 4 million people while housing expanded by 5 million units. I'll admit that this chart and these statistics have really thrown me for a loop. What are your thoughts? 
Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Whether you're looking to buy in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. If you're thinking about possibly selling, then we can help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and just fill in your information and then we'll reach out to you. Any questions or comments about the market data? Then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.